Here in the UK, 2024 brings exciting improvements to the charging experience on the public charging network. In this video, I will explain the legislation that brings about these improvements and what this means for current and future EV drivers. On the 24th of November 2023, the UK Government enacted new legislation entitled the Public Charge Point Regulations 2023. This places enforceable requirements upon public charge point operators with the aim of ensuring a consistent and positive charging experience for EV drivers. I've placed links to the websites from which I've drawn this information in the description of the video. Have a look at those links if you want more detail on this subject. The legislation details numerous requirements, which can be summarised into the following headline topics. Contactless payment, roaming payment, minimum reliability, access to a free helpline, open data and clear pricing. Let's discuss each of these topics in some detail. Firstly, contactless payment. This requirement places an obligation onto charge point operators to make it easy to pay for rapid charging without the need to provide personally identifiable information. This applies to all new public charge points of 8 kilowatts and above installed after the 24th of November 2024, but it also applies retroactively to any existing charge point of 50 kilowatts and above on that date. There is a one-year grace period before enforcement of this regulation, giving operators time to make their charge points compliant. The way legislation is written, the contactless requirement does not apply retroactively to any AC charge points. Therefore, the 22 kilowatt and 43 kilowatt charge points that are already deployed and which are useful to Renault Zoe drivers, among others, are not at risk of being removed contrary to what I suggested in a previous video. So that's great news for us Renault Zoe drivers. Next is the roaming requirement. This requires that all operators join forces with one or more roaming payment providers so that you can pay via an app. The idea is that there will be just a few roaming providers, meaning fewer apps or payment mechanisms to deal with. There is a two year grace period with this part of the regulation, so we might have some time to wait until we see every network change. There is no reason why they cannot start straight away, but it always takes a while to implement the technical solutions needed to offer new payment mechanisms. The good news is that this requirement applies to all charge points, including AC charge points. This should largely kill off the closed proprietary charging networks that we have seen to date on the AC network, with each operator having their own app that you had to sign up to in order to use their charge points. It also sidesteps the great personal data grab that has been going on with charging apps for the last few years. There should be no need to sign up for a specific app to use an AC charge point while at a destination, which has happened in the past. It is possible that the operator-specific apps will remain, perhaps offering preferential charging rates for members. But use of them will no longer be a requirement, and good riddance to them, in my opinion. I have acted early with regards a roaming payment provider and signed up for one, because this is already useful to me. I first tried Bonnet, but Bonnet managed to completely break their authentication system for existing users. As a result, I am now totally able, unable to log in. Even if it had worked, the user experience of the new authentication system was going to be awful. And despite me telling Bonnet that there was a problem, they've done nothing about it. So I've now given up on Bonnet completely. Instead, I now have an Octopus Electroverse RFID card, which seems to cover a lot of networks already and should be even easier to use than an app. Have a look at Octopus Electroverse if you need a solution at the moment. Having said that, if you do not need a solution straight away, the smart move might be to wait to see what happens. 
The roaming payment provider space will probably change quite a lot in the UK over the next couple of years, driven by this new roaming requirement. Therefore, if you can hold off, you might reduce the chance that you provide your personal information and payment details to a provider that disappears or gets taken over, both of which might increase the risk that the information go astray. The next requirement is about reliability. Operators are required to achieve a minimum of 99% uptime across their network for their rapid charges across a year. This level of reliability is what we need to avoid charger anxiety, which is the real anxiety that exists for some EV drivers, rather than range anxiety. The latter disappears very quickly. There are a couple of disappointments in this part of the regulation for me. Firstly, AC chargers are not included in the uptime statistics. Secondly, if an operator loses connection to a charge point, then it is not considered out of service, despite the fact that it might be. However, this regulation does ensure that operators maintain their charge points. They will either have to invest in their own maintenance teams or sign up to a maintenance contract with a third party. This will ensure that outages are much shorter than they are at the moment when they do happen. Any old dead chargers that are no longer being maintained will presumably be removed. That avoids the risk that anyone plans a journey around them only to find that they are not working when they arrive. This may reduce the total number of charging sites a little bit, as sites with only a single poorly maintained charger may be shut down. However, the quality of the network is now more important than the quantity of chargers. So this is a very good thing, in my opinion. The next requirement is that all networks must provide staffed helplines 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for free. The staff must try to help with charging issues in their control, such as software inter and interoperability issues. The next requirement is around pricing. The price of charging must be clearly and publicly visible. This can be through an app or a website, although you must be able to see the price per kilowatt hour without registering or signing up. There is also a clause that requires the price of energy not increase at all once the session has started to ensure fairness. Note that the price excludes other costs, such as parking and overstay fees, which can still be applied above the pence per kilowatt hour price. Next is a requirement about the availability of data from operators. Specified types of data must be made available using a standard format called the Open Charge Point Interface, known as OCPI for short. The data to be made available must include the location of the charging site, both as coordinates and as an address. Each part charge point's availability and status, the charging power of each charge point, the price of charging, times of operation of the charge points if they are not open all the time, information on parking and any other restrictions, payment methods available, and the type of facility with which the site is associated, if any, such as a hotel, restaurant, and so on. There is an exclusion for this part of the requirement in that operators can expose slightly less data for charge points that are not capable of transmitting data, points which are basically an electrical outlet and not much more. The final requirement is somewhat less visible to us, which is that operators must report lots of information to the regulator, mostly annually. The regulator will be ensuring compliance and undertaking enforcement actions for non-compliance. It's worth calling out that there are a couple of exemptions to what is considered a public charge point. Only public charge points are um, legislated on by this new regulation. The one exclusion that you might care about is that a network open to only a single manufacturer's cars is not considered public. In particular, this means that Tesla superchargers that are not open to non-Teslas are not impacted by these requirements. That's good news for Tesla owners really, who would not benefit from this being enforced as they already have a superior charging experience in most regards and don't want that impacted by changes. 
However, it will apply to any Tesla superchargers that are open to non-Teslas. Just over 30 sites in the UK now fall into this category at the start of 2024, where Tesla has opened them up to every EV. I wonder if this is why Tesla have been slower in opening up more of their sites to the public. Tesla V4 dispensers include contactless card readers and screens, but prior superchargers do not. Therefore, by limiting the number of sites that they have opened up to the general public, they have avoided being pressured into upgrading lots of sites with new dispensers, or being forced to close them again after opening them if the upgrades were not completed in time. So, in summary, the new Public Charge Point Regulations 2023 are now in place. They include requirements in the following categories. Rapid chargers must offer contactless payment. All chargers must offer payment through at least one roaming provider. There are minimum requirements for the reliability of rapid chargers. Operators must offer a free 24-hour helpline. Pricing must be clear and cannot change during a session. Data must be openly available via a predefined data format. And operators must report data to the regulator, who will take enforcement action for non-compliance. Most of the requirements have a one-year grace period before enforcement begins. However, most requirements are enforceable by 24-11-24, a date to remember and our charging experiences should be all the better for these changes. I think this is great news. Well, that's it for another video. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments are most welcome in the section below. If you've liked the video, it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you've enjoyed it and YouTube may promote it to others who will also enjoy it. And of course, click subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks.